Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. And, and by the way, just going to relate it to this. An another thing that is made clear in the new regulations is that they are expecting, if, if you have done the plan of care up front, if the doctor's done the plan of care up front, you need to be careful to make sure of what the doctor says the expectations are. If the doctor's expectations are that things are going to get better, and then based on, then in the, in the work that is done is work that is done only in order to maintain, and at the end of the day, people haven't gotten better, that's going to likely um, cause you to cause a red flag to happen at CMS. So, but one of the nice things now is you no longer have doctors having to, having to, to I don't want to say invent, but having to always have a plan which, which has as its goal at the end of the 60 days, oh, here are, this person's going to be back to normal, right? The plan can actually say at the end of the 60 days, this person is going to be the same, but because of the skilled care that has taken place, it, it, the, the patient will not have deteriorated during that time. And I think just not to be disrespectful to physicians, but they need to be educated on this also. Because right now, I am telling you that in Medicare that has been going on, I mean, this case was resolved and put into play months ago. And right now, I am telling you that very few people are following the new GMO. They're still going for the denial. They're still telling families that they're off therapy because that their goals, they haven't made their goals, that they're, they're not getting any better, they've plateaued. This is a chronic problem, so they can't be expected to get better. And I think it's now with the education process, and CMS has vowed they're going to educate everybody. They did put the changes in the manual. They do have some upcoming seminars if you go on the website, but they're months away. So this is a slow process, but actually your clients are eligible for this right now. So you don't want to find out six months from now all those payments are going to be reversed to the home care or to the long-term setting. Okay, do you want to... What's in the manuals that we just downloaded? And that's um, actually been, just the... I mean, we've been GMO and Sibelis. <laughs> Okay. In terms of this person who is chronic and probably has other things going mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. needs, mm -hmm. social mm -hmm. needs, probably is depressed, right? Um, and uh, who knows what they're doing for advocation? When once we get them stable, mm -hmm. that word is a chronic, bad word. But essentially, they're not getting worse. Is to your point. So we've got them right. to be able to maintain mm -hmm. whatever that new level. I would use the buzzword <laughs> maintain rather than okay. than stable. They're maintaining so they're the maintaining condition that. of the wound because the word stable is like using the word pink when you describe an injury. It's, you know, you're in trouble. So someone going in once a month. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a geriatric You, care you so certainly can do it, but again, the documentation. <coughs> Why does a skilled person have to go in once a month to maintain okay. her, her disease process? And again, it's driven, it's all driven by the documentation, the complexity of the individual, and, and what you need to do to keep them on. It certainly can, but as we all know, preventing a hospitalization doesn't always come under insurance. Um, you can often say, if you let us do this, they may not have to go to the hospital and the insurance company will decline it. So I'm just saying it's a, a vicious cycle trying to get through and Medicare has always, once you think you understand everything and you're doing everything, they always change something because they're not making enough money to keep the program going. So I think it's staying alert to all of the different changes that come. Another question? To the point about the hospitalization, mm -hmm. is I mm -hmm. think a lot of this obviously mm -hmm. is driven to mm -hmm. decrease hospitalization. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the mindset of documenting, 
what is it that we can do in the home to prevent hospitalization? And, and Medicare will also allow, um, you know, a tr you can train an um, unskilled person to do things as simple as on the case with the insulin, the VNA has been known to go in and draw up syringes of insulin and leave them in the refrigerator <coughs> so that the family member can give it. So they're not actually drawing a dose. There are cases where somebody who's blind or legally blind um, is able to get a magnifier put on their syringe so that they can visualize it and continue to give their own insulin. We all know that if you go into an assisted living and you're requiring finger sticks and insulin, that's a problem because that's not just assisted living. This is a skilled service to be doing finger sticks and to be drawing insulin. So all of these things, you, we know what keeps them skilled. We need to write that. And we need to write that they're um, an example of the wound. The wound continues, the infection continues to heal. The wound size is, which shows maybe it hasn't gone down any. If anything, because of the infection, it's gotten larger. So all we want to do is keep her from being infected. I just wanted to add a couple of points to that. And, and then let's go to the next example. Um, <clears throat> as, as Linda had pointed out, if you, if, if you are training somebody, right, it may be that even though you've trained them, um, you're going to need to be able to supervise them or at least check in to see if everything is okay. But that's all going to need to get documented because the issue is always whether the skilled service is necessary. It may be that the skilled service of a nurse is necessary to come back to check after this service has been provided by the daughter or whoever. But the regs, the, the, the regs as changed also make it clear that the mere fact that there is nobody around to provide what would be an unskilled service doesn't therefore make it a skilled service, right? So if the, if the, if the skilled service needs to be provided because everybody, is refu everybody else is refusing to provide it, that doesn't make it a skilled service, right? And I think there's been some real ambiguity about this. I think the regs are now assuming that because there are home health aides, there are a bunch of other players that can be involved in this program, that therefore they're not going to be paying for, for skilled professionals to be providing non-skilled services. The other thing I just wanted to mention is that, is that I think the role of the geriatric care manager in all of this, especially as far as the home care is concerned, is going to become huge. Uh, both in terms of working with the home health agencies to develop these plans, right, uh, and in terms of being the advocate for the patient if the home health agency terminates or if the nursing home terminates, right, to be doing the Medicare appeals. Because I don't think that it is efficient to have lawyers doing those appeals. Because lawyers, like me, don't know anything about medicine. I mean, we, don't, we just don't. You don't know any of the home health terms. We just don't know that stuff. And the notion of, and so, you, so any appeal is going to, to Medicare, uh, and by the way, I think the statistic that I recently heard is very interesting, is that 80% is that of Medicare appeals beyond the first level are resolved in favor of the patient, right? Um, but it's a matter of no one has, knows how to do the appeal, right? So, uh, to, but for those appeals, you're always going to have to have someone who is a healthcare professional as part of that appeal. And it probably does not make economic sense for there to be both a healthcare professional and a lawyer. Right? That's just too much per hour when you add it all up. Probably lawyers, as, as I can imagine this evolving, will be advising geriatric care managers or advising home health agencies regarding these cases. Right? But I think that's a place that GCMs really need to be. And, and, I and then I want you to do this next example. I will tell you that one thing that Debbie and I in our practice have always done, and being a former director of nurses for many years in long-term care, I need to tell you that I wouldn't think the same way as I do now. Always go, always go for the denial. You, you want to appeal that. You, well, you have nothing to lose. You could win. If you don't, you've lost. So always encourage your clients to appeal the process. 